Good morning. Good evening, everyone. And uh, welcome to the Northampton Planning Board meeting of January 12th, 2023. Um, it's a public hearing and there's one large item on the agenda um, of site plan review on 103 Ryan Road. Um, prior to opening up the uh, meeting, we want to make sure that everybody knows that uh, this meeting is being recorded. The Zoom portion of it is being recorded. Um, people who are on Zoom can communicate with the board through the chat function. And Carolyn, Miss, or myself will read those out loud and answer questions that come from the audience, questions to the applicant or about what the discussion is. Um, I think that's it. And then uh, before we go to our actual business items, we offer this opportunity to people to come to the podium for public comment. If there's anything they'd like to talk, Jermaine, to the city's planning process, um, not about the item on the agenda at 103 uh, Ryan Road. We'll get to that in turn, but any other items? Hand okay, hand. we only have one person out there in Zoom world, so um, it's easy to kind of see what's going on. So then why don't we open up the site plan review for a detached second unit by Stephen Ferrari and Esther Ralston, um, located at 103 Ryan Road, Florence, map ID 22D-1. Is that on? Am I loud enough? Yeah. I guess so. It's green. And the share screen. Um, I see it at the top. Uh, my name is Stephen Ferrari. I'm here with Mr. Ralston. We own a single family home at 103 Ryan Road in Florence, Mass. And I'm here tonight for uh, site plan approval for uh, what I had originally envisioned was an accessory dwelling unit, but I guess under current zoning, it's actually a second residence on the same property. Um, so I, Carolyn, I did want to bring up the plan, but. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm having some, some other issues. So. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. So. so, Esther and I have owned this residence for 39 years. Um, and about 15 years ago, we demolished an old barn on our property and built what was going to is basically a, a garage. Um, and it was going to be office space for my business. It was never used as office space. And what we're hoping to do now is to convert it to a single bedroom apartment or additional dwelling unit on the second floor of the existing structure, which is partially finished. It's been rough plumbed and wired for quite some time, but we've never finished the work. Uh, it's not even heated at this point. It's used for tool and equipment storage. We have a single bay garage and a garden shed. Um, on the screen is a copy of the site plan. This is the primary residence. Um, Ryan Road is at the bottom of the screen. The uh, accessory building is at the left rear portion of the property. The lot itself is 2.9 acres, so it extends almost 500 feet off the plan sheet to the rear. And the garage is or this building is quite a bit, uh, quite a ways off the, the road. Um, all of the structure that you see here is built. The driveway is built. There is a woodshed that um, is on the side of the property. Um, there's also a covered, uh, an existing covered carport, which we use to park our 17 foot camping trailer under. Um, so in terms of the physical changes to what you see on the property, the only thing we're proposing to do that is an actual physical change is to construct an additional um, gravel or TRG parking space on the left side of the driveway. So we'll have space for uh, 
four cars if we park behind the garage, one here, one here, one here, and one on the side of the driveway. Um, this driveway is paved and existing. There is a second driveway on the property here, which allows us to get uh, the camper into this um, covered area. We can also park a car here if needed. This driveway is, is mostly grass. Um, when we bought the house, there was a circular or U-shaped driveway that actually went around the house and came back out on this side. So both curb cuts have been in existence since we've owned the property. Um, this curb cut is a curb cut that was built 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when the city uh, acquired some back land and created a parcel for Habitat for Humanity to build a duplex right next to our house. So that driveway serves the, uh, the duplex, which is back here. Um, the building itself. Um, here are the elevations. This is the elevation that faces the street. This is the garage. This is a garden shed. Um, we have double doors into the shop area below. This entrance uh, connects to a stairway that serves the second floor space that will be the ADU or the uh, additional living space. Rear elevation shows uh, a, a patio door that will open on to a deck, a six foot wide deck with stairs down to grade. So there are two means of egress um, for that unit. The, uh, the dwelling unit will be uh, heated and cooled with an air source heat pump, um, Mitsubishi mini splits type of system. Um, here's the floor plan. This is the first floor of the existing structure with the shop uh, equipment storage space here. This is the garage. This is the this actually uh, predated uh, this structure it was the original garage on the property. We now use it as a garden shed. Um, here is the primary entrance to the second floor unit, and the stairs um, open up right here. There's a kitchen, a bathroom in the center, living dining room area, and a single bedroom. This is uh, unusable space. It's basically loft space below rafters, as is this space here. Um, the total living area for that dwelling unit is just under 800 square feet. And the building itself is at just over 900. That's the footprint of the building. And then the garden shed is another 280 square feet. You said this is an existing structure. Yes. Not doing any no, I have to finish. I have to finish the deck and back. That was never completed for the second means of egress. But in terms, I need to do some exterior trim. But the the building has been there for fifteen years. No new water or sewer. No, the um the water line is not connected, but it's already already been run from the house to the back building along with sanitary sewer, the electric service also run, there'll be, you know, one meter, um, one water meter, one electric meter for the whole property. There's certainly no comment by CCW around stormwater because it's existing. No, I believe there was a comment, there was a comment letter from DPW. And yeah. Why is there in Because it's in a detached structure. Okay, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get out of here in like five minutes. <laughs> so any units that are detached from the full structure require that. Also, if you can't structure, but if you want to say that this is detached, this happened, but this one is already yeah. off. Okay. All right. Okay. Move to close public comment. 
Well, we didn't open until this time. So I really <laughs> Um, any other questions from the board before we move to the public? Nothing that's much public here. Um, all right. So at this point, we'll see. Is there anybody here or in the Zoom room who would like to speak to this application? Either for or against? That would be a turning <laughs> um, <laughs> Hearing none. So if there are no other questions for the applicant, we could. Close the public comment and we won't be able to talk to them after uh, move the close vote on it. I just want to I just want to raise one quick thing, Sarah. Sorry to drive this out. Um I was at the site today and I, I met the homeowner, the applicant, and I noticed there's a, a sign there that is about the sawmill hills that's in the back. So there's existing access to sawmill hills. That's right by in between this house and the duplex house. You might understand it, right? It's not on your property. Yeah, it's actually, it's George, it's right. So the sign is right about here. And I don't know if there's an actual deeded right of way, but the trail access it parallels our property line just off our property. There's a fence here, um, there's a tree line here. So the, the walking access to Sawmill Hills is right along this property line. And this project doesn't block that at all. It's being added nope. balance, so that's public access. Nope. Okay, oh, back to the motion. All right, I move to close public comment. Thank you. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of closing the public comment, please be unanimous. We're, so we're all set. You can okay. be seated in the crowd. So I leave this up. Yeah. No, no, I think I can find it this time, Carol. So, um, because of the site plan, I think Carol noted here, you know, we need a majority vote of four out of the seven or four, six tonight, so four out of six. So theoretically, if there was a three-way that connected the existing building to the other existing building, then it would be the two houses we actually know would come before us. Um, in this district, it would because it the lot of my question. In URB or a or anything that's attached, I can see that when we attach it to the building, then it would not under this. See around the city a couple of times. So I don't think there are any conditions for this at all. None proposed by the staff, and none that we talked about or discussed. Can you take forward? I move to approve this application. Austin location at 103 Ryan Road, Florence, map ID 22D-1. All right, is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, motion's been made to approve the site plan review, approve the application for second unit on Ryan Road. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor? Okay, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck with your tenant or whoever that. <laughs> I've got a bunch of friends who would love to live there. First. Yeah. We have work parties second Saturday of every month. <laughs> I was like, Habitat for Humanity. Anymore. Let's strike that from the record. <laughs> Thank you very much. Would you need a special a special permit to tear down the walkway after you? <laughs> <laughs> or is that just a demo permit? <laughs> <It's> that... <laughs> was this was the second curb cut thing that was related to this that you sent? You sent like an attachment with the second curb cut. Oh no, that's a zoning amendment change that we didn't get to at the last meeting. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the last one. Okay. 
Um, was, that's why we put it on this agenda. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. But I think you were here for when that application came before us to create a second driveway for a woman who uses a wheelchair or disabled. I think I missed the, I uh, might have missed that. Okay. All right. So that's what that's about. Yeah, this one, I, I asked him about that this morning, but that's this is that second driver was long time in place. So grandfathered in, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple of other just items. One is this letter. Everybody got a chance to see it. I have a hard copy if anybody would like to look at it. Classic old hard copy. Okay. So we move to that item. Sure. Oh, so, so I, I misspoke. This one about is a letter about the sidewalks, yes, not about, <laughs> okay, right. Not about the, the reason for the second driveway. No, but we can go to that one. No, no, that's, that's okay. Let's stick to this one then. This, what the hell do I have here then? I like it. Sidewalk thing. Yeah. Yeah. It exactly what we talked about. So. The application that we just letter. Oh, yep, letter. yep. Somebody blow it up. The library with the letter. Yeah. Sorry. I remember where Cook Avenue is. Um, it's the one that goes um, intersects with Jackson Street and Bridge Road, and then goes back behind uh, Big Y. Oh, I always thought that was called Jackson Street. <laughs> you would think because yeah. it's an intersection. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Let's see if they can build a, what we deemed an impossible sidewalk. I drove past it. Seems like you can build a sidewalk there. Maybe. It seemed like it would have been annoying a few years, but they could do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things that are impossible. In I, don't, I don't think it'll annoy the engineers. I think it just might annoy the Conservation Commission. That's important. <laughs> there's like a culvert there, right? That's there's like a water flow underneath or something. Yeah. Why would that annoy them? Well, I just think it's probably a, a resource area of some kind off the side right. on either direction. So. Yeah. So coincidentally, you know, there was a meeting last night about the, the proposed rendezvous, roundabout or signal up by River Valley Market. And part of that project, if it goes through, is a more safety improvements along Hatfield Street up to Cook, but not beyond Cook, right? There, so unfortunately, there would be a gap between Bridge Road, which is the area we're concerned right. about. Right. Yeah. So I'll just pull one up on the map um, to just clarify that. Maybe, maybe instead of pushing there, we could. I was thinking it's so ironic that the River Valley is in like the, the least pedestrian friendly place you could pick. Right. Mm -hmm. Your town. It's Someone said that there was a reason that. I heard some weird thing that they couldn't do that because stop and shop or something like that. So. Um, so this is the, so let me just orient you. This is the, not, maybe I should go north, south, but um, I have to find where, I, where we are. Okay. So here's 737 bridge. Do you see my arrow yep. Yep. Um, here? So that's the, and then this is um, Hatfield Street. And this is Cook Avenue. And so the Walmart and Big Y Plaza are here. And then this section here is continuation of Hatfield Street out to King. So this is where the roundabout um, was previously designed and proposed at the corner of North King and, um, and Hatfield, so right there. And so as part of that project, and as George mentioned, the discussion um, last uh, two nights ago was part of that project included sidewalks to be installed all along 
the easterly edge of Hatfield, so the Walmart side of Hatfield, um, up to the intersection of Cook, because there are already sidewalks here that go to uh, Walmart. So this is the terminus of the probably the project that would happen at Hatfield. Mm -hmm. And then there would just be this one quarter mile segment that has no sidewalk mm -hmm. down to here. And so the tricky part is um, this shaded section where my cursor is going wacko, mm -hmm. this area right here, because it drops down and then comes back up. Um, I mean, those houses are all pretty close to the, the road, like their setbacks are not. Oh, well, yeah, look at the right away. It's oh, like, okay. I didn't none know. of that is their oh, okay. yeah. property. Is yeah, this right. that project that died a year ago? It's bad. I didn't even realize yep. it was This bad. is the one with the 10,000 year old artifacts. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the roundabout. I yeah. hadn't heard that that was bad. Okay. <clears throat> Got to get you a subscription to the Gazette. You can read the contentious. They'll let you read like one of the one article. I, I guess that would be my. I didn't. I must not have sent you the notice, the planning board, the notice. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, but there will be more, so I'll make sure that Lord <laughs> gets it. Stay tuned. Um, so back to this letter. You know, I I, I don't think we need a, a a motion per se, but the letter seems great about yeah. you know putting some kind of priority. Uh, I mean, what is our absolute ask here? Make it a priority to design and construct sidewalk connections along Hatfield Street from Bridge Road to Cook Avenue. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think this whole quadrant between the Big Y Shopping Center and over the CDS, honestly, is just underdeveloped, but the infrastructure that's there, it's all very walkable. I think it's great. <laughs> Kind of a wild intersection to get across. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So how they that's, do it? That's why that's why it came up as we asked to approve the Northampton nursing home right job uh, project. Yeah, so there'll be a lot more people. And we're yeah. all just nervous that what that's going to create. Yeah, I think a lot more foot traffic. Triangular super block basically is the kind of thing that we should be considering for putting it all into a smart growth overlay because it's the kind of property that. A developer would want a whole thing to figure the whole thing out because access is tricky and you can't just do it. I mean, it's better if you do the whole block. Mm -hmm. And that would give a message that the city would be amenable to that. To that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there would be interesting opinions from all the neighbors, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's a great site. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll stop there. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Carolyn, for drafting that and sending it on. So um, you're okay with that? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Makes it seem very professional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> Make you look good. Um, okay, do you want me to put up the other item? Sure. Okay. Which is draft language 8.8G. Right. So this what relates to the issues that came up of um, allowing, there wasn't a relief valve essentially for people who um, in particular had accessibility issues and might need a second uh, means of access to their parcel for safety or um, and um, given that this came up as a permit um, question and there wasn't really a legal mechanism for the board to allow it um, you all had talked about at the time um, creating language that would um, at least provide an opportunity for someone to come forward to the board to request that. So this is the draft language. And I guess we, I think we just didn't have, we ran out of time at the last meeting. So look at. But this is describing what we did in the last case and what there was precedent for doing with a prior case. So I, right. it's good to me. This is kind of what, what we did. This is only the downtown districts? No, everywhere. 
So in the, it's a long paragraph. The first there, yeah. So one, it divides it by either special permit or site plan. And so in the downtown districts, we definitely, you know, we want to make it a higher threshold to get a second curb cut because of all the pedestrian activity and wanted to minimize those potential points of conflict. So then the next pair, the rest of the paragraph is sort of for all the other districts that are outside the commercial districts and uh, the opportunities for people to come for site plan, you know, under certain circumstances. And this would sort of just allow another um, means for people in specific circumstances to get a second curb cut. Currently, would they just have to bear variance? Or, I mean, there is the site plan mechanism. So a couple of times people have come to the board and then the last time the board um, sort of created an opportunity, but I'm not sure. It's a gray area whether or not, uh, because there is a waiver process, the planning board could grant it, but it's supposed to be defined by the zoning. So I think someone could potentially argue that the they would have to get a variance and not a site plan waiver from the planning board. Yeah. What's the mechanism? Have you, and pardon me if you've already talked about what would be the mechanism for ensuring that when they sell it, that they don't destroy the work that? <laughs> well, I mean, that is a, that is a problem in terms of, um, I mean, typically, if it's recorded at the, so the decisions get recorded at the deed, I mean, at the registry of deeds. So um, it really is tied to a deed. So when there's a deed transfer, if someone's doing their homework on behalf of a client who's purchasing a property, this should pop up. Um, but um, I know that there are things that slip through the cracks, even with um recordings on property no i have a i'm i have a title issue for a piece of property uh, that there was a recorded ownership for, but in this case non-ownership of the land <laughs> but, um, but not specifically around a second no access, no but, but the point a, is, is, is it a ride at some two. point at some point if that they're going through that paperwork they find something yep. that's a problem it is seems tricky. Like often, the person who's disabled is not going to be the homeowner; it's going to be a dependent, right? And so, if that person passes away, you're like, so there's no one like out there looking for this stuff. And I mean, it's just, it seems odd that it would be tied. It's like once you grant it, I don't know. Well, but you wanna, we want to maintain the integrity of that law that ordinance that says only one driveway per per lot right so all of a sudden if people start creating second lots and claim disability and then they move away then those second driveways remain and i guess then people I mean, start seeing that as precedent the houses on my street have a second driveway and i have no idea why and i don't go around asking either I mean, yeah that's it's a non-conforming condition that's now grandfathered in it seems like is it such a big deal i don't know it seems like I agree with the title. I don't know if you're actually saying or not. Yeah, it seems like the potential title issues are, I don't know, problematic to me. I don't know well, if we, it's an issue or not. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's worked in very, a lot of permits run that way. And, and you know, when properties come up for sale, we, the, we often get um, frantic buyers saying, oh my gosh, my lawyer found this thing and I have to take care of it right now or else I can't sell or I can't buy. And and so it does work, um, but no doubt there are ones that don't, you know, that slip through the cracks. But um, it also allows for future enforcement. You know, if someone else, if it doesn't get caught the first iteration, someone could say, hey, wait a second, that was supposed to disappear. And so, it, and essentially, essentially, it's it says it's not grandfathered. You know, it's not. It doesn't become a pre-existing non-conformity because there's this condition. Some kind of thing that can show that title certainly. Yeah, yeah. the decision. Be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what permit? I mean, they're asking. They're going to be 
they're pulling a permit for that. So the permit gets recorded and that's what pops up when you. And it's not like, a, a, you know, they feel like they have to hire. Are there other things that are tied to the specific owner? Like what's an example of something that's tied to the current owner that would expire? Everything else would be so specifically not tied to the owner. Right, right. Um, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the um, wetlands permits are tied to the project, which could be the owner at that time. I mean, it transfers with the property, but um, I think. Or I call it maintenance plans for retention ponds and whatnot. That's tied to the property too. Yeah. Um, there are other permit conditions that are that I'm I'm just trying to think of another example that's tied to um, restoration after a certain point, um, and that could transfer with the owner. But um, I mean, often there's developers who develop housing for disabled people. So they can say, oh, it's going to be for people. Well, no, the issue is you could create, it's not that you can't, it's just that second driveway. Like you design yeah. it with a single driveway at the outset, right? If you know you have, and you're going to design a driveway and access that accommodates that. Right. But um, these are, this is sort of special consideration. Oh, my driveway is too steep. I'm now in a wheelchair. I need to create another way to get onto my property safely. And so that, I mean, these are few and far between, so I don't imagine that, yeah. Right, it's pretty much those houses with the garage at the basement level with the steep driveway down to the basement garage. And now these people who find themselves in a wheelchair all of a sudden need to get in the house at street level. And it's just not conducive to... Or if you're building a new house, you, should, you wouldn't design it that way if it was... Right. An ADA accessible house. And they'd have to come to us. Anyway. So, do we have some say that they come to us for an application to put in a second uh, driveway? Do we have some say about whether that driveway is paved or gravel or the length of it, the whole design of it? Uh, whether you would look at that as part of the site plan, but there, um, um, you wouldn't. Um, so in every site's going to be different. So you wouldn't want to predetermine what the length might be or the width. Um, and so this allows you that flexibility to look at each case individually. I don't understand each right. Right, and this has happened what twice in the last how many years? Twenty. Twenty years. So it's not something that comes up very often. Right. Yeah, and, and it's going to be a cop ninety percent of the time. Seems like a great. I mean, we no one can get a hundred percent. Like that's not a, a that's not well, a, a reasonable. We're all about the long game, right? So it might not get caught in the first title search, yeah, the second title search, it's but good. The third title search, we'll get it. I mean, saying like we'll get them. And and then no, so this is a draft, right? What happens next is it will get submitted to city council, then then will be referred out for public hearing, for in front of both the planning board and city council subcommittee on legislative matters. So let me be clear. A couple of months ago, the applicant came to us with her husband, came in here in a wheelchair with a site plan application. Yes. And in the future, if somebody does that, they'll also come with a site plan application. Yep. So the only thing we're doing here is providing the the black and white evidence that somebody can with a site plan application. Right, because the language um, previously said that, you know, or, or just still says if the board finds that more than one curb has, uh, then uh, uh, hold on. Um, so pre, you know, the existing language says that um, the board can approve an additional driveway curb cut if and only if the permit will promote and improve safe and efficient traffic circulation. So that's a pretty strong high standard to meet. And so this applicant, I don't believe met that standard. I think the board, but the, and 
the board obviously saw that there was a situation that really needed to be addressed. And so um, determined that based on where the property was located, there's not, it's not high traffic, right. et cetera, that right. you sort of said, okay, we're just going to do this, but let's please change the language because we really don't have the jurisdiction to do yeah. that. So in other words, you can approve for the disability, but it still has to promote an improvement. Yes, you right. Can't, you can't put it in the middle of a roundabout just because there's someone who's disabled. Um, what about adding something to two that requires the restoration of the curb open upon resale of pro property to a new owner or confirmation that the new owner doesn't also require that? I mean, if they're selling it to someone or someone transfer within the family. Well, they could always, so, that. so this, it, the other piece of this is remember, anyone can always come back for, um, an amendment to a site plan, right? So that new owner could come back and say, Hey, I'm the new owner, and I also have accessibility issues. Can um, can you allow this to be applicable to me? And as opposed to writing that in, I mean that that option is always there. Okay. I don't want to belabor this, but like, there, is there the um, an applicant with disabilities who has mobility issues? Is that a legal? term or like how, like how do we determine do we need to determine or is it just somebody saying like, issues? Um, let me see somebody shows up in a wheelchair yeah what if what if and somebody just to visit a lot of issues, so, yeah. i don't know this is going to be an issue but right sure. yeah. let the solicitor think about it so yeah. you know there is there is a fine line and i don't i you know if someone claims they have a disability the i think the law is that you can't ask for proof of that yeah um so someone who's going to apply for a permit is um that's the other reason why we want it to still be site plan approval because we um <clears throat> it should be an application process we're not trying to create an impediment but we want um we're serious about providing opportunities for people with um needs mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, we don't just want anyone to throw down and go to the building department and say, I need this yeah. because I am. Okay. So I think this sort of crew is a check on that. <laughs> Good question. Would hate to catch somebody in a scam that are closer to their house, but I feel like there's a lot of people who want technical for all kinds of reasons. It seems pretty easy to come here and look up That's pretty expensive, so yeah. Really? It's just it's time consuming. It's... I'm not gonna do this. No, I'm thinking about I'm talking about you can house. rent a wheelchair. Because like a lot of my neighbors have shut and driveways and it's very convenient. Where would you have this thing? I'm on a corner. I have another go on the other side. Just walk around. <laughs> I'm not gonna say <laughs> all right, right. I, you're on record recorded, so now you can't do <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that, that do something like this easily. Fine. I mean, I'm not going to work for it. It seems like it's already allowed. Over. Car Carolyn did have quite a bit of back and forth with this applicant about the burden placed upon them to, to kind of get the second curb cut. You know, and so we are trying to streamline it a little bit. So it's in black and white. See, they thought it was an extra expense. They actually also thought that having to repair the new curb cut 10, 15 years from now is an extra expense that they shouldn't have to bear. But I think we want to kind of hold hold to that, that the curb is reinstalled and uh, it just doesn't become grandfathered in unless there's a real demand for it. Um, so, yeah. yeah. You know, I would I would move that we just pour this on this recommendation, and it, as you said, let the uh, let our attorney look at that language around disability and make sure. And um, but it does give a little bit more clarity as more and more people age. And I think you're right; more and more people are going to be aging. They're going to have perhaps motorized wheelchairs and things of that nature. So we may see more of that. And they want to stay in their homes. Good reason have more sidewalks. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so a motion to recommend to sponsor this ordinance. Sponsor this ordinance change. Second. Did you, no, did you I'll, I'll just uh, <laughs> I move um, to sponsor this ordinance change. 
8.8 G. 8.8 G. Second. <laughs> Great. Motion has been made and seconded. Any more discussion? All right. All those in favor? Great. Okay. Great. And I think we have one set of minutes. Is there anything else? I don't see any A&Rs listed. Nope. First time in a long time. Yep. I think Mr. Whitehill was missing from this last meeting where the meeting minutes are held. Everybody else was here. Right, but um, also anyone who wasn't present, they could still vote to accept yeah. the minutes. Yeah. What was the date on them? 12? December 8th. The, it was through the minutes of December 8th. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of December 8th. Any discussion? Dave Jordan. All right. Thanks. All those in favor? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. One, two, three, five votes in favor. I where I was. Yeah, um, there. You were in. I thought you were in San Francisco. Yeah. Were you there for your? I wasn't. Here, vote for the meeting. Yeah, do we need to uh, um, move to uh, adjourn the meeting? Okay. Seven. There's a motion to adjourn the meeting at seven forty-five, and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right.